afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organization for inviting me to give this uh, lecture at this uh, conference here in India. Uh, uh, I was, as uh, we mentioned in the council meeting, uh, and I am one of the three foreign participants who, who attended the fourth IAEG Congress in New Delhi in 1982, and it's, it's always with pleasure that I come to India. It's not the second time, but it's always with pleasure that uh, I come to, uh, to, to India. Uh, at that time, at that Congress, I presented a paper uh, called uh, uh, Cost-Benefit Analysis uh, uh, of Site Investigations for Design of uh, Dam Foundations and Tunnels. Today, I'm talking about uh, a different topic, of course, uh, and the name is, uh, uh, is uh, the role of uh, in the environment in protect, uh, project optimization. This means that in, uh, usually we have several options for our projects, no matter if it's uh, dams or tunnels or slopes or whatever. And uh, nowadays we are forced to select those which have less impact in the environment. And I will try to show this through some examples. I will not cover all of the examples, uh, but uh, uh, I will cover, I hope, some of them which uh, may be interesting for you. All civil engineering projects have resulted in environmental impacts, some positive or negative. Engineering projects are essential to the economic and social development, and some of them, <coughs> their purpose is to protect people or goods from natural hazards, such as floods and landslides. The media and environmental organizations tend to enhance the negative impacts of the projects and very seldom make reference to their positive impacts. They transmit to the people the concept that the construction of civil engineering projects such as dams, roads, bridges, railways, airports, underground works, waterways and marine works is bad for environment. In this context, uh, high quality studies and design assume increasing relevance for the engineering projects to ensure viable technical economical solutions with the least negative impacts. In general, until the 80s, even in the most developed countries, large engineering projects had only to be satisfactory from both technical and economical points of view. When alternative solutions had less interference with the environment, they were, in general, only selected by the owners if their construction cost would be the least. The role of geotechnics in the optimization of civil engineering projects is, is, is important, as important as the efficient intervention, intervention of its specialists and their decisions on the technical, economical, social, environmental, and operational aspects of the works and it is especially relevant where there is a high degree of interference of the project with the ground. <coughs> the establishment of specific environmental legislation in the most developed regions <coughs> to mandate that environmental impact assessment are conducted for all large engineering projects in order to determine the best design solutions was essential to make compatible the construction of the works and the preservation of the environment. For example, the European Commission directive agreed in 1985 was the first one to be, uh, to be agreed from, from the European Commission, was soon transported to many countries, even outside the European Union. In my country, in Portugal, the first decree dates from 1990. This was updated in the year 2000, and the most recent version dates from 2013. Well, I would uh, like to mention, uh, to, to show some examples of what I'm saying and what I just said, Re related to construction materials, hydraulic undertakings, linear works, uh, bilinear works, roads, railways, waterways, etc., underground works, bridges and viaducts, maritime works, uh, and natural and excavated slopes. It's impossible to do that in the time I was given. So I have selected some of these topics. I will 
go on. Uh, I will talk the first three. I will tell. I give some examples and, and I talk about the the, the situation. And I hope to be able to say something also about natural and excavated slopes, where I have some very interesting examples. Because uh, as construction, uh, the construction materials uh, concerns. Uh, we are worried about the problem of extraction from quarries of more areas, the use of rocks and soils from excavations. But today, more and more, on account of all these things I mentioned before, we use recycled materials, quarry debris, and geosynthetics instead of these natural geological materials which were used always in the past. The optimization of the use of geological construction materials depends on the selection of sites where the extraction causes least impacts, reduction of the materials volumes within the optimization on design solutions, compensation of volumes, I'll show that in some examples, excavation and fields considered in the design and management of the materials during construction, and rehabilitation of the areas degraded by the extraction. This is something mandatory today. We cannot extract materials and leave the ground as it, it is after construction. You have to do works to uh, uh, rehabilitate these uh, areas. So uh, I, I'm going to make some comments on construction materials for dams and linear surface uh, works. Starting by dams, uh, I give you an, an interesting example of a, an earth dam in Portugal, which we designed in 1978 for the first time. At that time, we designed an homogeneous earth dam, uh, residual soil from a granitic residual soil, 50, 56 meters high, with a total volume of 3.1 me, uh, million uh, cubic meters. The borough area was part inside the reservoir area and part outside. In, in fact, two thirds of the borough area or was outside the, the, the reservoir area. Then this was not constructed, and many projects we did in our country, and in many countries is the same. It was not constructed. And later on, in 2003, we were called to look at the project and uh, adjust the project to reality of that time. And the first question we had, it was this of materials. So we selected another, an alternative solution, having exactly the same benefits as the other, by uh, uh, obtaining all the material for construction inside the reservoir area. Instead of having an homogeneous dam, we had a, a zone dam with even less volume than the others because we used some uh, rock fill material which allowed for uh, the slopes, the better slopes. And all the material was, I don't know, it shows, I think. All the material was, which was used was inside the reservoir and we didn't use the material outside as it was foreseen before. The, the, the dam is not constructed yet, although <laughs> some uh, uh, 10 years, have, 12 years have passed, and uh, uh, maybe uh, in the future we'll still improve it from this environmental aspect. This is another dam, uh, a concrete dam, uh, 70 meters high, 250 meters long, uh, with the need for the, co the concrete volume of 320,000 uh, uh, cubic meters, and the aggregates uh, required were about 300,000 uh, cubic meters. And for that purpose, we studied a lot the area and we were able to find two quarry sites from where the material could be uh, excavated that has been excavated. And in this case, again, this was the pro appropriate solution for the case. Concerning linear surface works, I'm going to show you a section of a no highway, six, six kilometers long, not more, the, this section, where we have everything. You have 40 meters high excavations. This is all granite, and more than that, this is the, located in the port wine vineyard zone of Portugal. Each square meter costs a fortune of a, 
a square meter of ground for the fortune. All these are port wine vineyards, and we have an old arch dam, and the road, the highway, is this one, was designed to cross this area, but for that we had 40 meters high excavations, 40 meters high embankments, mostly uh, uh, rock fill embankments. We have some viaducts, I will not talk about that, and two tunnels there at the bottom. Uh, it, in, this case, in cases like this, it's very important for the safe of, uh, environment and also for the economy of the project, the compensation of the volumes excavated and in the embankment. But don't forget the bulking factor. What happens very often is that people forget the bulking factor. In this case, the bulking factor is 1.2, which means that if I excavate 1 million cubic meters, at the end, I have one, I, I, at the end, I have 1.2 million cubic meters of rock field to be used in the embankments. Uh, and finally, the management materials is of most important. I'll give you this example, covers everything. So, we have, as I said, that those excavations, all this is granite. But if you look at those tunnels, the contractor was prepared to do all this part of the work. And finally, when this was finalized, you do, you, you do the construction of the tunnels. And the question is, what is going to be done to the almost one million cubic meters of material coming from these excavations in a place where you don't have a deposit for these materials. Secondly, we, with these materials being used as the construction was on, we could make some volume compensation and also we could adjust the project. I'm sorry, it's, it, it, this is what I wanted to show. One of, taking this into consideration, we were able to see that we had if we could have the two platforms of the, two, the highway at the same level, that we would uh, not be, uh, well, in terms of uh, volumes of uh, uh, materials. So we have a, a three meters difference. We have a wall separating the two platforms, and we have three meters difference in this wall. This has permitted us to reduce very much this volume of this embankment, and so we balance the volumes, as I told you before. So let me see if I find the correct. Another example is uh, a, the example of a huge excavation. I'll come back to this excavation after, uh, uh, but I'm talking about materials now. A huge excavation, which should not be done, but has been done, uh, th 30 meters high, and the volume of these two excavations, uh, there are two excavations, in fact, in this highway. They have a volume of two million cubic meters. Just these two small excavations in a length of 22 kilometers. So the problem was, the problem was uh, uh, that we, using the normal, the normal section for such a material, because this, uh, these are rock fill of very good quality, Probably what we would do, and usually what we do, to the slopes for this uh, embankment would be one to one. Fortunately, the, the, the owner of the motorway had uh, made the expropriation of this large band. So what to do with these two million cubic meters plus, not two million, two million excavated, but in fact, again, 2.4 million cubic meters. What could we do with this in order to, because we could not put this material somewhere else. This is Fatima region, where the Virgin apparently appeared in 1917 to the, to the, to the young uh, uh, shepherds. So what we did, we extended the slopes to one to one and a half. And with this, we could adjust the volume and use most of the volume of this excavated material and uh, not, not, not going outside the uh, expropriated area. 
This is uh, again a, 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 a linear work, but now we are in Brazil. We don't have these types of problems. We have a lot of places to locate uh, to, to, to locate materials, to, to place materials which if you have in excess. And this is a waterway. The waterway is much more uh, uh, demanding than a motorway. In that motorway, we, reach, we arrived to manage the things because we could come to about 6% of the gradient. Here, we cannot even arrive to 1%, 0.2% on account of the, this is a, a canal, three, about 300 kilometers long, and still we have long uh, excava high excavations for the slopes and high excavations also for the canal, so we have to balance as much as possible for example, in this embankment, but we cannot have we, the, we cannot manage as much as we would like because water is much more demanding than the the, the 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 road. So I will not go through that. Uh, uh, we uh, that I have some numbers uh, uh, on account of land reclamation, which is a very important issue for environment and for engineering, geology, uh, and development of uh, of the people. I have some examples. Or in Singapore, in Macau, uh, and in several beaches, one in Brazil, in Copacabana, and the others in Portugal, where we need material to uh, extend the, the beaches and the, the, the areas, etc. But I won't go through because I don't have time. So now I will t t give some words about this topic on hydraulic undertakings. And, uh, and this means I, uh, especially dams and uh, the hydraulic infrastructures. I will give you an example of uh, environmental impact during construction uh, uh, with the, example, uh, with the, uh, uh, the project of a, a large dam, uh, 90 meters high, uh, 400 meters uh, lo crest long, with a volume of 4 uh, um, million of cubic meters the dam itself, and about half a million, half a, th half a thousand million cubic meters of water in the reservoir. And it was necessary to create a, 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 um, a, a spillway and we wanted to uh, interfere as much as possible with the landscape at here and so on. So we were able to take advantage of the geological structure of the rock mass or its karstic horizontal limestones and we were able to excavate 90, this 90 meters high slope in this very important region because it's the spillway entrance with, with uh, 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 almost vertical with the least volume and with, uh, with, uh, without problems just in excavation and also in using uh, the volume, the material. We uh, uh, covered some of the holes of the karstic because this is karstic, with just with some some uh, sprayed concrete, and look at the the reservoir completely full, although in spite of this being a very karstic material. Why why do I would, I still would mention another thing, although I call there during construction, is the treatment we made to assure that the reservoir would fill. This is the, the, the reservoir. This is a marble, thus an impervious material. And all this is the karstic, very, the very karstic limestone with very big holes. So we had a huge treatment in both, for both sides, about 200 meters, 250 meters for both sides to reduce the gradient and allow the <coughs> reservoir to fill as you have seen in the previous one. Now, this is not in Portugal. This is not done by myself. This is Three Gorges Dam in China. My, my, the Chinese colleagues know this better than me. Uh, that this is a very interesting example. From many points of view, I, want to, I don't have time to go through all of them. It would be very nice to tell you what happened during these years. It's written there. But I'm taking care now of the problem of the environmental problems related to this. And some of them are during floods, suspended sediments, sediment load is heavy as a result of soil erosion in catchment area. 
to the reduce the sedimentation of the reservoir and to allow for the flow management, the dam was uh, in the dam or introduced 22 sluice gates uh, as well as 23 bottom outlets to allow sediments to be discharged during the flood season as much as possible. Moreover, a comprehensive for that is for the dam. That is for the dam. But moreover, a comprehensive forestation program has been planned, I think is going on, uh, as well as construction of uh, dams, several dams, one of them high, uh, in the most active tributaries upstream of Three Gorges. I think this uh, pr uh, program is under, still under uh, uh, implementation and the results are significantly good. You see, you have a, a look Look at the color of the water upstream, look the color of the water downstream, and the full discharge in a period of uh, uh, high, high, high flood. Well, natural dams. This is another topic. Uh, you probably heard about the, the, the La Josefina landslide in Ecuador, uh, in which th 30 million cubic meters of material came down and came down making a natural dam 2,800 meters high with a lot of uh, people living downstream and we had to act immediately. This was a, a, United, a, a European Union uh, uh, support to Ecuador. And then the first work which was done was the construction of a channel 80 meters deep to allow part of the water to go downstream, but still we had a big reservoir and we had, for, we had to design uh, 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 ways of improving the quality of this embankment, which was obviously poor uh, 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 when everything started. Now, back again to the linear surface works. Uh, our interference concerning this uh, question of, uh, of uh, environment may be through selecting alternative routes or looking at alternative routes and select the best. The volume compensation, as I said, crossing so unstable uh, soft soils, unstable uh, areas, alternative solutions in tunnel and open excavation, cost of land excavation, etc. I'm going to give you this example first. Uh, this is the example I showed you where the excavation three meters high of this area of Fatima I showed you is this red line. But we studied and proposed to the client to make a tunnel 10 meters below that line would be much better for the gradient of waterway and much better for everything. No problems with water because the water, the, 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 the water table is 80 meters below the, 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 the ground. This is all karstic as well, uh, limestone as well. And uh, we proposed uh, that alternative. So one would be the open, the open excavation, as you saw. The other one would be these two tunnels. See the, uh, the, the water table there? No problem with these excavations. And the client just asked, this was in the 80s, this part of the highways constructed 30 years ago or so. The question was the of the client was very clear. Tell me the price of this and tell me the price of that. And the price of that was three times the price of this. And said, okay, then a decision is made. Is this that you have to do? So the construction of the tunnels was put aside and the construction of this open excavation, which you have seen, and you see it again, is there. But, and this is, as I said, this is a karstic area. And it was very interesting that uh, we knew, we studied this area with all, all means, radar, geophysics of all kinds, uh, boreholes, etc. And we arrived to the conclusion that although there were caves, there were not caves which would prevent the motorway to be constructed. Because uh, very, very close to this, there are caves for tourists, 50 meters, 100 meters wide. 
but these ones which we studied, we thought that it would be possible to do. And then 11 caves have been, in these 22 kilometers, have been picked up, and from this 11, eight were dolines like this, 50 meters deep or more, but two or three meters wide only. And for those, we selected, a, we, we, this, we implemented a solution, which is the detail of the solution, with a, with a, a, a concrete slab there, and having the motorway over the, 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 the cave. So you, when we drive, you drive there, and we drive over this cave, which is there, and in 20, 200 years here from now, or 300 years from now, if you want to take out the, the, the material of the, the road, you can go and see. But three of them had al already some big rooms, and for that case, the motorway is here, we created a independent entrance aside con with, with a concrete structure with stairs, and people can come down and go down and see these big rooms, and they, the speleologists study this, this, uh, this uh, situation, which are very interesting one. But as God does not sleep, as people say, the same owners, two years later, uh, were constructing another motorway around Lisbon. And this is a section, and we were designing that, this was a section with two 12 meters excavation, op open excavation this side, 18 meters in the other side, and so naturally an open excavation. The question is that when the contractor started removing the material for the open excavation, they found, they found footprints, uh, dinosaurs' feet, footprints. And then, when the dinosaurs appear, the, the footprints appear, everything stopped. And then, we had a very interesting case, the most difficult design and construction of tunnels in Portugal, and probably in many countries of the world, because, as you can see, this is limestones and marls. As you can see, the, 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 the rock mass over the tunnel and the tunnel each the section of tunnel is 170 meters for four lanes each tunnel uh, has been excavated without any problem at all not with the TBM could not be possible obviously but with six sections six sections each one and then with uh, 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 very carefully and uh, with uh, with uh, uh, sophisticated studies, this was possible to be the design, designed and constructed 285 meters long. And just to give you an idea, the client was the same. This cost 10 times more than the natural excavation as it was foreseen. Well, uh, I will not comment anymore because I don't have time. I was called already. This is the question of uh, 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 the, the use of uh, uh, anchoring the, uh, of uh, reinforced structures instead of excavation, very expensive uh, 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 material, and problems with landscape. I won't comment on the Greek Egnatia Highway, where we have studied this problem. This is a landslide, huge landslide. There was a tunnel built until here, and from this side until here, and this was not done. And we studied all the details, and finally we proposed the construction of a tunnel and not an open work like a viaduct or whatever in this uh, alignment. And uh, I, uh, this is for the sake of the works, otherwise everything would come down. And I finally arrived to the last uh, uh, topic, natural and excavated slopes, and I'm briefly mentioning, especially this one, is the heavy National Park. Uh, natural and excavated slopes require stability analysis, 
and uh, uh, having into consideration geologically, hydrogeological, and geotechnical conditions of the ground, ensuring that supporting works, when necessary, have the least interference with the environment and the landscape. But in this case, as it is a natural park, we were told, to, were told please study this situation. There is a road below. Uh, the road is f f closed for two years now study this situation, but don't touch the rock mass. You have to, to create, to imagine a solution of putting this road in safe conditions, of put, having the people coming down, coming in the road, uh, crossing the road without any problems at all, but don't touch the material. So very briefly, we did a lot of things. This is just to have an idea of the, the, the road as it was. Look at this. In some cases, 200 meters, almost vertical. One of the blocks which fell and stopped the operation of the road, 10 tons, the block. And then this is the scheme of our design. So we could not cut anything, touch anything, unless to use uh, some, uh, some uh, dynamic barriers, which we did to, in order to prevent blocks coming down to, 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 to come to the road. Then to, the, we have, we have used uh, uh, reinforced mesh and rock bolts in a lot of situations like this. And in one specific situation, this one, the only way to, you, to, to go away from a situation like this was to make a false tunnel. Look at, this, they, these people are working at a 150 meters high Look at the equipment that is being used to, to put the meshes. Look, this, the mesh is being located and bolted. And look at this final the tunnel here. This, the, 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 it's, it would be impossible to do anything here but excavate this material, which was forbidden at all. And then we did what the, uh, the, the dead false tunnel. This is another case. I just mention it. I will not comment the case because on top is a monument. Uh, uh, it's not is in the, se the second one. This one you have above a, 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 a monastery from the 16th century and below a chapel from the 19th century, and all this material was the material which was in these conditions. And so we also designed a solution. And this is the view today. This is the patin, or the lack of patin, immediately after construction 30 years ago or so. And today, you don't see any difference between the, local, the, side, the side rock mass. And uh, it's like this. So, Finally, a, a slide, I don't comment anymore, to, uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which has, that has been selected, the solution has been selected, the short grid and precast pre grid, in order to not allow to the material to be dismantled with the uh, weathering conditions. And so it's keeping nice and uh, safe in this another highway. And finally, there are some conclusions, but the, final, the one I would like to say is all this imply that the optimization of corresponding projects, which as shown in the previous examples, requires qualified engineering geologists and geotechnical engineers to use their knowledge to look for the best possible solutions for the respective engineering works. Thank you very much. Okay.